hello guys welcome back to my channel please remember to like and subscribe now today we're going to be looking at the differentiation of inverse trigonometrical functions and we're going to start with a very simple function we're going to start with y equal sine inverse of x now one of the first thing i want to do with a function like this is to write it in a form that i can actually easily recognize it so we could go ahead and say if y is equal to sine inverse of x then the sine of y is equal to x. Now, initially, the function was explicit. Now it's implicit. Or we could even look at it as being an explicit function if we were to use x as the subject of the formula. Nothing is wrong with that. So, let us say we find, we could differentiate it to, we could find dy over dx, or we could treat x as a subject and find dx over dy. Let us do it both ways and see what happens. Now, if I'm treating it as implicit, where I have dy dx, when I differentiate the sine function, sine y, I'm going to end up with the cosine of y times the differential of y, which of course is going to give me dy over dx. The differential of 1 would give me, of x, sorry, would give me 1. So I'm going to end up with cos y dy dx equal 1, which means now that dy over dx is equal to 1 over the cosine of y. Now, because I started out with an explicit function, I want to end with an explicit function. Now, we have cos y here, so I need to get this back in terms of x. But bear in mind that from the initial step over here, we know that sine y is equal to x. So if we can find a connection between cos y and sine y, then we can get the function back in terms of x. Now, what connection do we know between these functions? So we could say recall that cos squared y plus sine squared y is equal to 1, which means we can transpose a cos y. So we can say cos squared y is equal to 1 minus sine squared y, which would imply that cos y is equal to 1 minus sine squared y, and we square root all of that. So what happens now is that when we go back to dy dx, dy dx becomes 1 over the square root of 1 minus sine squared y. But what do we know? If we go back over here, let me put that highlight that in red. Over here, we know that sine y is equal to x, which means that sine squared y would be equal to x squared. So we're going to have that. Let me give you some space here that dy over dx would actually become 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And that would be my final answer. For my next function, guys, we're going to be using cos inverse f of x. Now, instead of just using cos inverse x, where we simply get a simple differential, we're going to be using cos inverse f of x, which is mostly what you'll actually get. So instead of just having x, you probably will have a next function of x there. So let's see what happens here. Once again, the first step is that we're going to rewrite this in a form that is familiar. So we could actually say the cosine of y is equal to f of x. Good. So we treat it like an implicit function. When we differentiate the cosine of y, we're going to get negative sine y dy dx and of course when we differentiate f of x we'll end up with f prime of x now my job is to find dy dx so i'm gonna have dy over dx equal f prime of x all over negative sine y good now once again we don't want sine y there what we want is a function of x because the initial function was actually explicit. So we want the thing to be explicit. Now, bear in mind that sine y would be connected to cos y and cos y is equal to f of x. With that connection, we can now recall. So recall that sine squared y plus cos squared y is equal to 1. What we need to get rid of is a sine y. 
So we can go ahead and say sine squared y equal 1 minus cos squared y. Which would imply that sine y is equal to the square root of 1 minus cos squared y. So this implies now that dy over dx is equal to f prime of x all over negative. Bear in mind that this was negative. So replacing the sine y, the square root of 1 minus cos squared y. But going back, we know that from over here, that cos y is equal to f of x. So what is going to happen is that this is going to become dy over dx is equal to f prime of x all over negative square root of 1 minus f of x all squared. So with a minus there, to make this look a bit more presentable, we could say negative f prime of x over the square root of 1 minus f of x squared. And that's a general rule for the differential of y equal cos inverse f of x. For my next function, we'll be exploring y equal tan inverse of f of x. So once again, you know the procedure. We're going to have to rewrite this function at first. So we can actually say that the tangent of y is equal to f of x. Once again, making the function implicit. So when I differentiate tan y, I'm going to get sec squared y times the differential of y, which would give me dy over dx equal the differential of f of x, which would be f prime of x. We transpose for dy dx. So dy dx is going to become f prime of x all over sec squared y. Now, of course, we want a function to be explicit. We know that tan y is equal to f of x. And we also know that there is a connection between sec squared y and tan y. So right now we can actually recall, so recall that 1 plus tan squared y is equal to sec squared y. So what it means is that where I have sec squared y, we can simply put 1 plus tan squared y there. So this implies that dy dx would be equal to f prime of x all over 1 plus tan squared y. But bear in mind that tan y is equal to f of x. So this would imply that dy over dx is equal to f prime of x all over 1 plus f of x squared. And that's the general rule for differentiating tan inverse f of x. So it doesn't matter what f of x function is. This is a format that you'll take on once you have differentiated it. Now what I've done here is to summarize all the differentials on the far left hand corner here. So the differential with respect to x of sine inverse f of x is equal to f prime of x over the square root of 1 minus f of x squared. Now look at the similarities between sine inverse f of x and cos inverse f of x. The only thing that differentiates them is the minus sign. And we can all appreciate that whenever we differentiate cos, we get a negative sign. So you can use that concept to remember it. Now when I differentiate tan inverse f of x, we end up with f prime of x over 1 plus f of x squared. Now what we want to do now is to look at several examples. So the first example is y equal to sine inverse x squared. Good. Now, what, since we're dealing with sine inverse x, we want to recall a general rule for differentiating sine inverse f of x. That says the differential. So let me write that there. So you can recall that d over dx, which means the differential with respect to x of sine inverse f of x is equal to f prime of x all over the square root of 1 minus f of x squared. Right? So let us see what happens. So this implies now that dy over dx is going to be equal to 
f prime of x. And of course, f of x is a function that we have sine inverse, which in this case is x squared. So when I differentiate x squared, I'm going to end up with 2x all over the square root of 1 minus f of x, which is x squared. So I'm going to have x squared squared. So when I break that down, I'm going to end up with dy over dx equal 2x all over the square root of 1 minus x to the 4. And of course, that is by laws of indices. All right, so we're going to step it up a bit. We're looking at y equal tan inverse of cos x. So we're going to recall that d over dx, which is the differential with respect to x, of tan inverse f of x is equal to f prime of x all over 1 plus f of x squared. Now, in this case, my f of x, of course, is cos x. And if you want, you could actually write it and do your thing. So I'm going to have dy over dx equal. When I, when I differentiate cos x, I'm going to end up with a negative negative sine x. So what I'm going to have is negative sine x all over 1 plus f of x squared. Now, bear in mind that f of x would have been the function that you have there, which is cos x. So 1 plus cos squared. I know if you have cos x squared, you can write it as cos squared x, for simple. All right? So that would be my differential there. So I have negative sine x over 1 plus cos squared x. And of course, if we want, we could do some simple simple modification on this. So you could go negative sine x over 1 plus, bear in mind that cos squared x is really 1 minus sine squared x. Not necessarily in this particular question, but we end up with negative sine x all over 2 minus sine squared x. It could have been a proof question, so it's important to know how to modify trigonometrical identities. Right? So that is what we'll actually end up with.